responses. If not careful, these young women could easily fall into their trap. Some young female students say they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Today, we find out the real truth behind the blesser blessee controversy. Who is to blame? The desperate parent, the blesser, or the young woman? Next. Welcome to In Her Time Talk Show, a program proudly brought to you by Say What Youth Organization in proud partnership with Swedish Embassy of Zimbabwe. In Her Time Talk Show is a space and platform where young women come from different backgrounds within different institutions to talk about their challenges, hopes and aspirations, or whilst we have role models guiding us along the way. Today we start off with our first episode and we're starting off with a bang. We're going to be talking about the Blesser Blessy controversy. The blesser blessee controversy is something that should be stopped by the blesser. The blessee, you have a role to play. You need to be content with what you have. This is so heartbreaking because the consequences of these relationships are very sad. They say that it's difficult to be away from home, but it's much more difficult when you have to meet the demands of university lifestyle. They're called by different names, aristos, blessers, sponsors, or even sugar daddies. And today we have young women from the University of Zimbabwe. And of course our role model, Abiona Mataranyika, who is the SRC president at the University of Zimbabwe. Tell us a little bit about what's really happening. Today we get to hear from these young women the truth behind the blesser, blessy controversy. Welcome ladies. Hi. How are you today? Fine. All right, thank you so much for joining us for In Her Time. So are you guys excited to be here? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's great. So let's talk about the Blessa Blessy controversy because we've been hearing a lot more about it. Okay, and of course we have Noma Gugu, we have Ruvimbo, and we have Anna from the University of Zimbabwe, and of course our role model Abiona. I mean, what is the Blessa Blessy controversy? Um, the Blessa Blessy controversy is this issue that is a reason why a male who is relatively rich, mm -hmm. sponsors a lady, a mm -hmm. young lady, mm -hmm. for companionship or sexual favors. Interesting. All right, Ruvimbo, tell me a little bit about your thoughts around this. I mean, can we say that this is a new phenomenon or it's something that's been happening over uh, the past few decades, but now it's just become more apparent? I don't know, is, is it because of the economic situation or maybe, I mean, media is just you know, making it a big issue. Yeah, that's an interesting question you got that right there. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, I think it's just a cultural phenomenon that has been in, in existence for quite a long time mm -hmm. because women are financially dependent on men. That's mm -hmm. the norm. So as young girls, we really expect men to give us more of these things. So as a result of peer pressure from the social media mm -hmm. and economic hardships, we end up having young ladies then... Um, taking, risking their lives so as to get their basic commodities from places. Mm, interesting. All right, Anna, um, is this, can we call it sex work? And you can correct me. Or can we call it a transactional uh, relationship? Because I know that you are a peer educator and you're a volunteer, you know, at the University of Zimbabwe. And you deal with a lot of these issues when young women come and approach you and they tell you their different issues. We have lecturers also saying, hey, listen, in order for you to get a distinction, just have sex with me. So what can we call it? Um, if you ask uh, someone, are you guys doing sex work? They say, no, this is not sex work. Mm -hmm. This is a relationship with mutual agreement. Mm -hmm. There is a boyfriend, there is a girlfriend, just that the, the, the guy is very old, mm -hmm. and old enough to be like your father or your grandfather. Right. So you are receiving favors in exchange for sex and then companionship because some of them they just want your time they yes. say they don't want um sex but they are lonely mm -hmm. they want companionship they want attention mm -hmm. so you just have to be there when they need you so it's different from sex work because there is a particular person mm -hmm. it's a blazer that is known 
to my friends. Yes. So when he comes around or when my friends see his car, they mm -hmm. just say, your man is here. So mm -hmm. it's different from sex work because with sex work, you have a lot of males. But with this blessed thing, it's a particular person. Mm -hmm. Abiona, you're the SRC president, and I'm sure you see a lot of, you know, these things happening in terms of, you know, these intergenerational relationships. I want to go back to what Anna just said, and she said that, you know, these blessers or sponsors or sugar daddies are as old as, you know, our fathers or even our grandfathers. I mean, what are the key drivers to these relationships? I think the word blesser already explains. It's someone who's blessing the other person. Mm -hmm. And him being the blesser, it means that this person is giving you favors. Mm -hmm. And for me, I always feel like there are two sides to this. One can also decide to call it sex work mm -hmm. or a mutual relationship. Mm -hmm. And how? Because number one, I've been exposed to situations where they do not really have a relationship yeah. but it's this mediator in the middle and he comes on a saturday and he says i just need someone to to hang around with mm -hmm. tonight mm -hmm. and then in return i'll give you this yes. and that's sex work because it continues because next week there's another person that's going to come and you're going to give that person sex and then in return they're going to give you money and then there's also a case whereby People actually have a relationship mm -hmm. and it's actually going on for a long time. Yes. And that's the one that we can actually call, uh, you know, a mutual relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's two sides to the story. And, and I think the, what all those type of relationships have in common is the fact that at the end of the day, you are receiving something from that person. Mm -hmm. It's not really a relationship whereby you're just saying, okay, I'm looking for companionship, yes. and then it's fine, I can go home after that, and then it's over. The fact that you are receiving something, mm -hmm. that's why people now call it blesser or blessy relationship. You know, it's interesting, ladies. Um, I know um, guys from the universities are called Mayuba. Am I still, am I correct? Am I still, because I've had a few years away from university. So we have um, Mayuba. And this girl apparently is also dating, you know, a guy the same age as she is. But at the same time, she's benefiting. And of course, um, Abiona is saying at the end of the day, it's sort of a transactional relationship. But is it poverty or, I mean, is it wanting things? And I think, you know, you young ladies can then clarify that. Because at the end of the day, if my mother can afford to buy me matemba, nema chunks, but then my roommate is coming with the pizza and chicken and chips every single day, and she says, listen, just join the crew, man. I recently saw a page when I was doing research ab about the Blessed Blessed controversy of the blessers page. Like, call us if you want uh, to be hooked up with an older guy who can take care of you. I mean, no more Google, what's happening? There is peer pressure, yes, yes. Nick, there is. But then sometimes it's not peer pressure. Mm -hmm. It's the economy. Right. It's forcing girls into this situation. Mm -hmm. Take me, for example, I was in university in 2017. Yes. The situation was a bit better, mm -hmm. and my parents could afford to give me money to get a new hairstyle every two weeks. Right. They, I didn't have to go to anyone else. Why do you need a new hairstyle every two weeks, though? I am used to this. This is the life I was used to. Okay. And the economy is crumbling mm -hmm. a bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. Yeah. So now I am left with my parents telling me they can afford a hairstyle every two months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need someone to sustain to, to the sustain. two weeks hairstyle. Yes, and and unfortunately, I have been raised up to be someone who looks up to a male figure. Mm -hmm. The young ladies are taught that males are providers. Yes, I, I grew up with a statement that your mother mm -hmm. got married to a guy who was living in the city, mm -hmm. so that was a step up. Mm. Your step up is to move from the ghetto to the lower density area. Mm -hmm. So I am looking for someone like that. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, the guy I have who is my age doesn't have a house in the lower density area. Right. I'm going to go to the man, to the mature man who has oh, that house. Who is married. Yes. After the short break, we'll continue the conversation as we ask the key question. Who is to blame? The blesser, the young woman, or the desperate parent? We'll be right back.
Welcome to In Her Time Talk Show, a space and platform where we bring a young women from different backgrounds and, of course, from different institutions to talk about their hopes, aspirations, and dreams. Remember, this program is proudly brought to you by Say What Youth Organization in proud partnership with Swedish Embassy of Zimbabwe. We continue with our topic, the Blessa Blessy controversy. And it's interesting, just before the break, we were discussing about where this controversy even came from and what are the driving factors to then, you know, lead these young women to be involved with, you know, these older men who are as old as our fathers and our grandfathers. But right now we want to then talk about who is to blame. Is it the desperate parent? Is it the blesser? Or is it the young woman? Abiona, what are your thoughts? Um, I think a lot of people are to blame in this situation. Mm -hmm. Number one, the blesser, the lady in question, the parents. Mm -hmm. And the government. Although but then we say. have Noma Gugu saying, listen, man, I need to maintain my two-week hairstyle. But we've never seen anyone die if they lasted for a month or two months with their hairstyle. That's why I always say this catchy phrase. Where I say people in our generation now want to live a champagne life whilst they come from a freezer background. That's the problem <laughs> we have right now. I do not think, um, you know, getting your hair done or buying chicken in, there's enough reason for someone to be in a relationship with someone who's married. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. do not think so. I can never like promote such behavior mm -hmm. due to circumstances like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I've also seen circumstances where people are actually genuine, not that I'm promoting people who are in that situation to do that, mm -hmm. but I've seen uh, situations where, you know, parents cannot afford their child's fees and then someone has to resort to lying to their parents that yes. they, you know, they're working at this place whilst they're doing, you know, that blessed, blessed relationship. Mm -hmm. At least that, you get it. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's a good thing, but well. And then on the other hand, we also blame. So firstly, I'm saying that the girl is there to blame. You can't be in the relationship just because of chicken. Right. Three dollars, guys, come mm -hmm. on. And then on the other hand, we also blame the economy mm -hmm. because... The economy has not been friendly lately. It has been, you know, getting worse and worse every day. And then on the other hand, we'd also like to blame the parents mm -hmm. these days because they never, like, take time to spend it with their children and talk about those things mm. and also get to understand what they would want because, you know, university life is different from secondary school or mm -hmm. primary mm -hmm. because girls are now growing and feeling themselves, yeah. you know, the butterflies are all over the place. Mm. So, yeah. Things are now different, so parents also have a role to play in this. And then finally, the blesser, because how can someone who's married mm -hmm. and in their late sixties, fifties, you know, be in a situation where they are chasing around young girls like that? Mm. You see, so you know, it's a not lot of right. People are actually, to blame, it's not right. It's not good. Yes. Anna, what are your thoughts around this? Um, I would like to comment what uh, Abiona have just said. Mm -hmm. um, when one gets a blesser, mm -hmm. uh, you want to be blessed with something that you can't afford. Right. So it's not always about the pizza. It's not always about the hairstyle. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's about this expensive trips, mm -hmm. the designer bags. Man, I can't afford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so the blesser sometimes is there to fill in the financial gap. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of situations in school whereby there's no enough raise, mm -hmm. and then you maybe you don't have money for rentals, and then a blesser comes in now and then you're given money for accommodation and then he's providing for your food. Mm -hmm. So mainly it's something that I can't afford. So it's something that is beyond my reach. So the blesser now is coming in to help me. Right. Yes. Okay, so uh, Noma, you know, Anna is saying that, listen, the blesser is just there to help me. But um, let's look at some of the consequences here because, I mean, when we hear him being the blesser, it sounds something angelic. But at the end of the day, it really isn't, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the main issue with mm. the blesser blesser controversy is self-esteem. Right. Because you don't have control in this relationship at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. With someone your age, someone who's at par with you. You can clearly say, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Stop this. If he cheats on you, you walk away. Mm -hmm. With a blesser, then if he cheats on you, sometimes he doesn't cheat on you. Mm -hmm. You actually know that he has three or four blessings. Yes. And you're fine with that mm -hmm. because he's giving you what you need. Mm -hmm. You don't want love from him. Right. You want the money. Yeah. So you're fine with that. Mm -hmm. And it also comes to sexually. Yes. This, this man will say, 
I don't want protection. Yes. You have to be mm -hmm. okay with that. Mm -hmm. There are very few blessees who can then say, no, you're like, take a stand and say, no, I want protection. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't want protection. You get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not the one who proposes abortion. It's you. Mm -hmm. Because I want money from him. I'm not looking for lifetime companionship. Yeah, I'm yeah. not looking mm -hmm. for anything permanent. Mm -hmm. So I say, I want an abortion. Mm -hmm. Or he says, I have a wife. Mm. Get an abortion. So in the end, it's all a downside to the girl. Mm. Mm. Ruvimbo, who's to blame? Can we blame the parent? Because, I mean, they've paid my fees, or at least they've tried, and they've sent me to school with what they have. So, I mean, can we blame the parent here? Um, to some extent, I would like to blame the blessy because like what Anna was saying, it's um, a failure to adapt to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I think ultimately it all comes back to us failing to be content with what we get mm -hmm. from our parents. Right. So I think we need to maybe reach a certain level of contentment, then we can be able to do our way with the blessings. Then I would also want to blame our parents mm -hmm. because how can your daughter be living such a lavish life and then you don't even take time to ask her why and where she's getting all that money. Mm -hmm. So I would like to blame the parents for not um, being involved in the financial livelihoods of their young children. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, you know, uh, did you have something to add on to that, Aviona? Okay. I, I want us to, to go back to what Noma was just saying in terms of the impacts of this blesser blessy controversy on a young woman's sexual reproductive health. We're talking about unwanted pregnancy, which then leads you to possibly unsafe abortions. And then we have STI and even um, HIV and AIDS. Um, Aviona, what are your thoughts around this? Uh, that's why you saw me the other time when I contributed. Mm. I was so against the idea of even being in the relationship, whether it's because of the designer bag, the nice clothes. Mm -hmm. And before I answer that, I'd like to say that there was a time that, you know, this blesser blessy thing was not even famous. It just came. There was a time that it just came and became so normal. And before us, there's this thing with our generation. And our generation tends to feel that they are so special and they cannot live with certain things. That is our problem. Mm -hmm. And I remember you also went to university, yeah. but it was not really that common because people at that time, it's not like people didn't come from struggling backgrounds mm -hmm. or those freezed backgrounds you were talking about, yeah. but they were able to go through school. And when you hear the testimonies of how they got first class degrees, mm -hmm. even though coming from backgrounds like that. Mm -hmm. But now our generation, you know, tries to portray this picture of, you know, they can't even live without eating pizza in, without eating chicken in. And at the end of the day, you start wondering, is it worth, you know, aborting pregnancy and, you know, at the end of the day, conducting these, you know, diseases mm. and your life is a mess and sometimes you have to miss your lectures and your grades are not so good. And at the end of the day, that's the question one has to ask themselves, is it worth it? Because these things comes with consequences. And most of the people that I've seen in these relationships, it's like that they go through abuse, even emotional abuse, because mm. sometimes they can't even question those people because at the end of the day, they still want to maintain that life. Mm. And you can't even ask that blessing could you why I saw you with this girl yeah. you are now putting me at risk because this mm -hmm. person is giving you everything that you want mm. so for you to question that person you can't do that now you're not inferior to that person mm. so at the end of the day the main question is is it worth it is it worth your life is it worth the consequences that you're going to face just because of a designer bag or chicken in that you're mm. just going to eat and mm. we all know where it goes after that after the short break, we'll continue the conversation or we'll conclude actually the conversation as we address the challenges. What can be done on an individual level? We're talking about a change of mindset amongst these young women. And of course, what can be done culturally and of course at institution level? We'll be right back.
Welcome back to In Her Time Talk Show, a program proudly brought to you by Say What Youth Organization in proud partnership with Swedish Embassy of Zimbabwe. In Her Time Talk Show is a space and platform where young women share their hopes, aspirations and dreams. And of course, you've just joined us on our last segment. And just before we were talking about who is to blame at the end of the day. And it's interesting that the girls had quite a lot to say about the blesser, the young woman and even the parent. But right now we want to address the issue at hand. As we always say, In Her Time, of course, talks about challenges, but we also bring solutions to the table. What can be done on an individual level? What can be done, you know, within the community and at home? And what can be done at an institution uh, level? And I think I'll start off with the SRC president, um, Ms. Abiona Mataranyika. Abiona, what have you guys been doing in terms of, you know, empowering the young woman and under, helping her understand her value so that she doesn't get into the bless a bless controversy? So speaking on behalf of the SRC, we have managed to establish what we call the user mental health support group. Mm. And we have about four groups. That means about 1,000 students in those groups where we deal with those issues and we talk about them inviting, you know, professional people and people that are specialized in that area who are very good at those conversations mm -hmm. and they talk to the students. And so far, so good from the feedback that we have been getting from the students. Mm -hmm. I think it's been going so well. And the institution in general, as you know, one laid by the clinic who's always ready to talk to the students mm -hmm. about those issues. And then what we can do to do away with this issue is every one is a role to play mm -hmm. you know starting from the blessy the blesser the mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. the church the government and everyone mm -hmm. the parents of a role to talk to their children and you know try to provide everything they need as best as they can mm -hmm. of course not to you know go outside the box but whenever they can they should talk to their children and give them whatever they can yeah. and then as for the blesser i think they need to be more responsible mm -hmm. and you know act like all the people that are supposed you to know to be actually advising these young children yes. and then the government has definitely has to work on the economy so that we do not end up in this situation as mm -hmm. we have had that the economy also plays a part in this situation and then the church also has a role to play in you know educating people about you you know the balance between men and women because i've seen that the reason why some girls unconsciously end up in these relationships is because they are taught that they are inferior to men uh, in their different churches or religions mm. so the religion the government the parents mm. the blesser and the blessee in question has a role to play in order to do away with this situation that we are in all right. Okay. Um, Ruvimbo, let's talk about the change of mindset for young women uh, within even the home setup. You know, it's interesting having conversations with a few young women. Um, we have some young women coming from homes whereby whenever they come home for sim break or vacation, you know, they're in the kitchen, they're baking, they're having a great time. But then the boys are busy hustling. You know, they're being told provide. And then when, you know, uh, the semester starts, the boys are coming back and giving their sisters the money. So young women have sort of been taught to receive rather than to provide. How can we change that mindset? Well, I think we can first address the issue of doing away with the silence that um, is around the whole financial dependency dependency issue yes i think young women need to be taught that they can they have so much to offer mm -hmm. one can start up a business you can mm -hmm. be selling maputi you yes. can do your poetry projects there's so much to do mm -hmm. so i think we just need to move away from the past where we have men providing for young women yes. and then advance in the brighter future after all the future is female mm -hmm. so we just have to move away from all that and lead them to the path where they are financially depend de mm -hmm. independent mm -hmm. and norma what are your thoughts I think in all this, mm -hmm. we are putting the young lady on the cross. Right. I think the mindset should change from when they are young, mm -hmm. especially with the young boys. Yes. Because it's the, it's the male blesser who goes out to seek the young lady. She's yes. not the one who's going to his home. Mm -hmm. He's the one who comes to the University of Zimbabwe. He hounds me. Mm -hmm. He's, I'm his prey. Mm -hmm. So if you then say the young lady is supposed to change her mindset, I can say no the first time. Mm -hmm. Some people are not as strong-minded. Right. After maybe five, six trials, mm -hmm. he gives me money before I, I do anything with him, mm -hmm. just to show me that he can. Mm -hmm. So we have to show the males that females are not prey. 
right. teach your young child, your young male child, he's five or six, mm -hmm. tell him you, you're the same level as your sister. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of, your son playing soccer in the road mm -hmm. and your daughter learning to sweep, mm -hmm. learning to take care of the house. Mm -hmm. It's not about the hustle when they're young male, men or young women. Mm -hmm. It's about someone who's five or six. Yes. The mindset you teach them from a very young age. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anna, so, you know, we're talking about a change of mindset, you know, um, but how can young women also, because I know that charity begins at home, but how can a young woman, and she, she's, I mean, Noma's, you know, bringing something interesting, and she's saying, at the end of the day, if he comes three, four times, listen, man, if I, I mean, if he can give me some money, then I think I will accept him. How can young women learn to understand their value? What do they need in order to understand how important they are and, you know, how important their contribution is within our country and the community? The young women's voice needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. So whenever a, a lady is speaking, they must be an audience ready to listen, mm -hmm. not to criticize, not to be judgmental. So the society just need to appreciate us. And we need to be taught that we are precious. Mm -hmm. our, our minds are precious. Our contribution matters. So every time when a lady wants something, there must be someone who is ready to listen because we don't want an outsider, mm -hmm. a blesser to listen to what I'm saying. So whenever I say, mom, I need something, don't just say, ah, mm -hmm. but the, the person next door will actually say, ah, maybe I can help you with something. Then you can go. You're mm -hmm. comfortable going mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. So charity begins at home. So mm -hmm. whatever that we say, it matters. So the voice of the young lady is being silenced. Mm -hmm. So whenever you, one is indulging in the blessed blessing relationship, mm -hmm. they don't share their opinion. Mm -hmm. They are oppressed. They are being uh, harassed, sexually uh, harassed. Yes. But they can't speak out mm -hmm. because they, they these blessings, they just they justify mm. what they does. So we need more of awareness. We need more in terms of empowerment. Yeah. We need mentors. Mm. We need to be taught like as a sister, you are a role model. Mm -hmm. Like when you do the blazer, what will you teach a young girl mm -hmm. who is in grade one? Mm -hmm. Would she do the same thing? So we need to be role models ourselves. So we need the best out of us. And it begins with everyone who is uh, in the circle. You know, it's interesting, um, Abiona. Anna is saying that, you know, sometimes we have young women that are, their voices are not even being heard at home and within the community. And it's a cultural issue, of course. I mean, I can't, you know, there's some women that can't, young women that can't sit down with their mothers mm -hmm. to communicate and say that, you know, mama, I'm having this problem and, and how do we address that? I mean, uh, communication amongst young women and their parents or their guardians. I think lately I've been loving the energy that has been in, you know, in the country and, you know, in the world generally, mm. where we're now holding seminars and different programs where there is a mother to daughter, you know, type of thing. Yeah. And they are discussing on what to do, you know, to help the girl child. Mm. And I think we need to do more of those programs where, you know, the girl child gets to establish a relationship with their parents mm. because that's where everything starts. Some of those things, it's not really because the parents cannot afford, mm. but they are just you know, used to the fact that, okay, Kanashal University, just, you know, be, just use whatever that we gave you, you get it. And some of those things, you can even go Kanakumabero and get, you know, mm. a pre-loved gene and just buy the thing is, the thing is, parents have become so reluctant that they don't even take time to say, okay, do they still fit? Mm -hmm. And we need to buy you new clothes. And some of those things, it's not because they cannot afford it, but it's just that they have become reluctant to, you know, talk to their children and establish a relationship with them so that they can be able to talk about those things. All right. Well, that was our last segment as we were talking about the solutions around the Blessa Blessy controversy. And, you know, we're saying that behavior should change from an individual mindset, of course, you know, trickling down to the community and within the home. It's important, you know, how we raise our young women, how are they growing up and what are they being told at the end of the day? Not only that, but at institution level, do we have mentorship programs or 
are there any programs to really inspire these young women or any business initiatives that they can actually start thank you so much to everyone that joined us wherever you are um, in the world and thank you to uh, Noma Ruvimbo Anna and of course our role model Adiona remember this program was probably brought to you by Say What Youth Organization in proud partnership with Swedish Embassy of Zimbabwe see you next time in our time means, in my prime time as a young lady, what am I facing, what challenges am I facing, and what can be done by society to assist me? In her time, it means that in our own time, this is our period as the young ladies to be heard. This is a period where our concern actually matters. It's a space and platform where young women get to learn and share their experience so that they can grow to be admirable and wholesome young people in the society. We grew up in a patriarchal society where women do not have the voice to speak about the issues that are affecting them. And in her time, for me, means a platform where women can raise their voices and speak about pertinent issues and how we can address these challenges.